week we're going to do what you suggested. Hi everyone and welcome. This week we're going to turn some cedar shavings. Stick around. So I use Total Bolt resin, two to one resin here. And uh, there's a coupon code that I have, link in the video description. Also these are new to me, these Unicorn Art Stir Sticks. Also linked in the video description. I love them. They're made specifically for resin. So uh, check them out if you'd like. Making sure it's thoroughly mixed. I did some power mixing as you saw with the drill attachment and also used the Unicorn Art stir sticks uh, which worked really well. So I put a little bit of resin in um, and as you probably saw me I dropped in a, a round piece for the bottom and that's made of maple. So doing kind of layering here as I'm putting it in uh, making sure that the cedar shavings get completely covered and saturated. I really didn't want to get any bubbles. Making sure all the resin gets in and that the um, sacrificial piece of uh, 2x4 there is in the middle. Put it in the pressure pot. And attach the air compressor hose and we'll leave it be for a little bit. Magic of uh, video editing. Here it is all out of the pressure pot. It looks a little better than I thought it would to be honest. This looks like it's not working but it actually is. It's, it's getting some uh, movement in there. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, checking it out. I don't see any major problems with it. Um, here I use uh, a clamp to cut off that piece of 2x4 and make the top uh, flat for, for mounting on the lathe. Finding center. finding center on both sides because I'm going to be putting it between centers at first until I can make a tenon. So after it's mounted on the lathe, I just turn it turn the lathe on, see how out of balance it is and start turning. Here I'm using a Easy Wood Tools uh, number one hollower with a negative rake tip. Also linked in the video description. Switched over to the skew chisel uh, for a moment to uh, see if that works any better to, to flatten out the, the side and get it completely uh, trued up. And here I'm starting the area, uh, the, the tenon, where the tenon is going to be. So it's still between centers here, so I'm not pushing very hard. It's, uh, I don't want it to fly off the lathe. That would be bad, very bad. A little bit of a different view, a uh, view from the top here. You can see it's still between centers and I'm using the skew chisel uh, from the bottom to uh, define the tenon. Again, just going slow because it's uh, still not you know, completely safe in terms of being held on there securely. 
So after I make the tenon, uh, I take out the, the spur center and use the four jaw chuck. Do me a favor and uh, hit that like button. It really helps me out and I would really appreciate it. Here I have a Forstner bit uh, helping to hollow out some of the, the middle. And after this, I'm gonna put in a little bit larger uh, Forstner bit to try to get a little bit of area. Somebody gave me a good tip once uh, that I didn't know um, until several months ago. Um, start small and work your way up to the bigger instead of going with a very, um, instead of starting with a two inch Forstner bit, start with a one or one and a half and work your way up. And it does work out better. So passing on that tip. So I got a lot of the material out with the Forstner bits and the rest I am using the Easywood Tools number one hollower as well as some other tools that you see me switch back and forth with. But as you know, if you've ever worked with resin before, it's, it's finicky, if you will, and everything takes longer than you think it's going to. You think, well, this is just a very small, um, lidded box or whatever it may be and it just it takes a long time it's not a fast project by any means so after most of the wood is out of the middle i get into the the resin i'm trying to make the idea here is i'm trying to make this as thin as possible, not not super thin, like shine a light through anything, but thin enough so you can actually um, see some of the of the shavings uh, very uh, specifically and see them almost uh, by themselves. Pro tip, don't wear nice clothes when you're turning resin. You can see that I got it down uh, as, as thin as I wanted it there. You can see some light shining through it, filling in any little pinholes with some Starbond CA glue and accelerator, and then I'll sand again. Sanding again at 80 grit. I could uh, turn off the little nubs of the CA glue if I wanted, but I thought that was a little bit uh, too much and I didn't want to make the um, make the piece too, too thin where it would crack. You can see how it's coming along there with the denatured alcohol. And starting on the axe abrasive paste here I do have a new Axe discount code to save 15%. Use code PF10 at checkout at axewoodpaste.com. Link in the video description as well. So just buffing off the abrasive paste. And now going on to the polishing paste, one of my favorite parts. If you haven't tried Axe, and you do any wood turning or resin turning, I highly recommend the product. I use it on almost all of my products, so be sure to check it out, and 15% off is a great deal. So if you've been waiting, now's, the, now's a great time. Here I'm putting some double-sided tape on a, on a jam chuck. 
And I'm going to use this to turn the lid of the piece using a piece of maple and chewing it up with the bowl gouge. Estimating the fit there. And now this is going to be the underside of the lid, so I'm going to be marking where it's going to be and making the lip. And there I'm taking off some material that's going to be um, the bottom of the lid just to take off some weight. And expose that lip so it sits on the top of the piece securely. Taking it off of the double-sided tape, taking out the jam chuck, and I use the lip um, to put it in the four-jaw chuck while I work on the top of the lid. It's not going to be anything fancy, it's just going to be uh, a little flat but with curved edges. And then I'm going to put a finial in the top, which you'll see in a moment what I choose for the finial. This is a wood pen blank that I'm going to use. So making sure it's between centers. And I will start turning the finial. It's not going to be the complete length of the pen blank. Um, not even quite half. Um, so what I'm doing here is just uh, making the part of the pen blank round and starting to shape it. And here's a, a view of it uh, up close where I'm starting to sand it. And where the sandpaper is there by the live center is where the bottom is going to go into the, uh, uh, the hole that I made in the center of the lid. Here I have it in a Longworth chuck uh, to take the tenon off. This is our, for me anyway, always a very nerve wracking uh, nerve-wracking step because I don't know about you but I've had stuff come off of the Longworth chuck when I think I've had it secured. So I tend to go very slow and take my time. And I didn't show all of it but I obviously did make it take off the tenon. And here I'm using a Japanese pull saw uh, to take off the little nub and then I sanded it down. Here I'm using my branding iron. The branding iron is linked in the video description. A very light sand and spray off with the air gun and some sanding sealer. This is the lid and I'm going to be using the Axe products on that and we're going particularly fast through this because you've already seen the Axe once, so after the Axe products, I'm going to use some Starbond CA glue again to uh, put the finial in the middle. So don't go anywhere, wait till you see it all together and make sure you let me know what you think. Thank you everyone for watching, I really appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned for the photos here at the end. Please like and subscribe. Until next week, peace out.